Hey everyone, it's Eric. And hey. In this video, we're going to talk about why, right now, we think GPUs are where it's at for cryptocurrency mining. So uh, a while back, Eric and I, we were trying to get into the, uh, the crypto scene. And so uh, Eric started trading some coins, and he actually made a pretty good profit off it. And he, you know, we were talking back and forth about doing the mining. And I was looking at it, he was looking at it, and so he just said, let's just freaking do it, man. And so um, we dove feet first in, and when we were first looking at it, we went to all the how-to articles that I'm sure you probably are watching right now if you're watching this video. And everybody said, you need to go with the ASIC. The ASIC is where it's at. And by the math, the ASIC is totally where it's at for that particular algorithm. But um, as we started doing this, we purchased some equipment and we tried out various different things. We actually have all kinds of different technologies here. And we really wanted to give a better idea and prove it versus just listening to what everybody else said. And we actually learned some things that we wanted to share with you. Um, so that you don't have to spend thousands of dollars like we did if you get the same answers. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what do we have here, Eric? So, to give you a little bit of background, we've brought a collection of some different things that we have here. CPU, GPU, FPGA, and uh, ASIC. Um, just as examples, these are different generations. They're not designed to be specific models or anything like that. But it's an opportunity to give you some examples about uh, what this technology is so that we can help you understand why we say right now GPUs rather than ASICs. Uh, first example is CPU, Central Processing Unit. Now anyone who's owned or used a PC in the last 20 years should be very familiar with the Central Processing Unit, the so-called brain of the computer. Um, they're very flexible, they're able to run all kinds of different code, um, and they're able to carry out a myriad of different types of tasks from uh, mathematics to uh, sorting data to uh, moving around icons on your screen, you name it, a CPU can do it. But with that flexibility uh, comes complexity uh, and uh, a good deal of code overhead. That means uh, on, a, on a pure performance perspective for a given task, it's not necessarily the best at any one thing, um, but it, it does a little bit of everything. The next item that I have here is a GPU, a graphical processing unit. Now, GPUs came about because uh, as PCs developed and grew better, we wanted things that had better video capabilities. We wanted to be able to play games and render scenes. Uh, and the basic function of GPU, the basic components of a GPU, are that of an um, initial set of cores, whose job it is to set up a frame for your view, and then a whole lot of little tiny cores um, that uh, do things like uh, act as shaders for various polygons that are showing on your screen. So in this example, this uh, GeForce GTX 1080 Ti has over 3,000 uh, tiny cores who, that in parallel are able to um, shade different components on your screen. So a lot of parallelism. Um, Abe, do you want to talk a little bit about FPGA? Yeah, so I picked up these, uh, uh, these other devices too here. So um, this is a FPGA. Um, this is a, a field programmable gate array. And it works similar to the idea of the, an Arduino. You guys may have, uh, know about the Arduino. Uh, so uh, they work similar where you actually have to load the equivalent of a sketch. You have to program it to be able to tell what it, what it does. So it's kind of wide open and you uh, give it the code and then it, it will talk to your miner to be able to do the mining. Now what's really great about this is that it's actually very speedy at what it does. So when you run the program, it's actually very quick, but it is fairly specific. So a lot of times we use this for development. And so we'll take an FPGA, we'll run it, we'll test it. And then what we'll do is we'll find out that's, the, that's what we want to do. And so we take out all the other stuff and we make it more specific into an application-specific integrated circuit. And so that's what an ASIC stands for, that's what it is. And this is all of the variability stripped away to only one thing where it does only one thing. And in this case, this ASIC is designed to be able to, um, is to, be able to hash. And so the great thing is it's super quick and it's very, very energy efficient at the number of hashes that it produces per second. A um, little bit of history on kind of the evolution of Bitcoin mining specifically. Now when Bitcoin first came out, uh, the CPUs were uh, and, and are 
uh, still capable of, but they were the primary uh, location for mining of uh, Bitcoin for a very short period of time. You see, um, as more and more miners started coming in, one of the key tenets of hashing is the winner of the blockchain reward uh, is the first person to correctly guess the right hash. Now, the more hashes you have, the more likely you are to win that blockchain reward. So, they turned into an arms race where the various miners look to try and produce as many hashes as possible and go towards what produces them the best. We did some calculations to give you a sense for uh, how many hashes and, and what sort of orders of magnitude we're talking about here for these devices. So from CPU to GPU, we're talking about uh, thousands of times uh, more hashes per second uh, per watt. Um, and then comparing that from a GPU to a ASIC, it's thousands of more times hashes per watt. So when you factor all that in between CPU and, and a dedicated uh, ASICs that's manufactured specifically for mining Bitcoin, and you have something like uh, millions times more hashes per second per watt uh, as a result of these, which ends up making the ASIC not only far faster so that you win those blocks, but also far more profitable from a pure, pure power consumption perspective. Right. So. If this thing is a million times more powerful than the CPU, then what's the point? Why are we even saying that a GPU has any chance? Because that's even a thousand times less efficient than this. Well, it's only a thousand times less efficient when you're dealing with that particular algorithm. So if we were talking about Bitcoin and this was a Bitcoin machine, this is actually a script machine, this ASIC machine will only do this type of algorithm. It won't do anything else. So let's say that Litecoin and all the other script coins just fail and you know they're they're no good anymore. Um, this machine uh, will only be able to do that and it can't switch to any of the other coins that are that are a lot more flexible and a lot more making more money. This card, on the other hand, is able to be able to hash thousands of different coins and thousands of, of different algorithms, and it can do it in just a few seconds. So overall, what can happen is that uh, this can actually save your butt if one of the coins don't work out because let's face it We don't have a magic ball and any one of these algorithms or coins could fail or not be very successful And there could be one that's rising to the top yeah. Something else you got to consider is your exit strategy as well. So in, in the event of a, a specific cryptocurrency cache or specific algorithm hash um, a, a dedicated miner is really not going to have a lot of value to you. On the other hand, um, Cryptocurrency entirely aside, there's a healthy resale market for GPUs, and that gives the, an ability for you to have a exit strategy even in the event of a significant market crash. Well, the other thing is too is that this ASIC miner also has one other Achilles heel, is that as all the other ASIC miners are going up, and the uh, it also increases the difficulty on that particular algorithm and those and those coins, which makes your profitability for this machine do nothing but go down. So you may be making forty dollars a day off of this machine, but it, you know, within just a little bit, it could be, you know, it could be up down to ten, down to zero. And as an example, we actually just pulled the specs and we found out the the X11 D3 ant miner machine only a week ago was making thirty dollars a day. That ASIC today, because of all the new D3s that came on with the new batch, is making ten dollars a day in a week, and people spent thousands of dollars for that machine. Um, we, we did a bit of uh, profitability comparison as well between these two. Um, we, we really wanted to kind of normalize the dollars that you spend versus what you can reasonably expect to get out. Now bear in mind this is right now, today, based on current exchange rates um, and current difficulties and, and this fluctuates on a daily hourly basis. Yep. So this all could change very quickly, but we want to give you a sense in terms of what it looks like right now today. Um, if I go and I look at a high-end CPU, uh, best case scenario if I use a uh, algorithm switching uh, pool mining approach such as NiceHash, I, I can end up getting a few dollars a day uh, leveraging a CPU. Mm -hmm. By comparison, if I go and I take a high-end GPU, um, eight or nine dollars a day is uh, reasonable, something that you could expect. 
By comparison, if I were to go and, and use something like a uh, Antminer S9, um, I could probably end up getting $38 a day or so. So you kind of see that evolution in the number of dollars that that produces. Um, now, if we normalize that though, between the cost of purchase um, and the cost of power, and, and uh, what that profit of it is, I could end up buying five of these for the same cost of an Antminer S9. Mm -hmm. In which case, if I've got five of those, I'm producing actually a little bit more from a profitability perspective uh, for the same dollar amount of purchasing. And power consumption between those two examples would be pretty comparable as well. So the other thing we're trying to look at is the FPGA. Unfortunately, we don't have hard numbers for you right now. Um, the FPGA was a device that was used a, a lot more in previous years, you know, but probably after like 2003, 2004, when a lot more ASICs were coming on board, people just jumped straight from GPU over to ASIC, and they became very polarized, and it has to be this way or it has to be this way. And uh, we're trying to be a little bit more open about that. The FPGA has a lot of potential because it still is programmable, but it does take a specialized skill set to do that. So we're actually going to create a whole entire video just about how to reprogram an FPGA and what it is um, so that you guys can get more information in that. Um, so uh, please you know, look out for that. So thanks for joining us. We really appreciate you watching the video. Um, come visit our site, freelearner.how. There's a link below where we've got lots of other similar videos um, and a companion article to this video where we've got details and data um, and uh, some of the calculations that we used, some of the things that we talked about here. Um, we hope you can, join, you can join us next time as we learn to live free each and every day. Thank you so much. Have a great day.